Hello everyone, welcome to this live stream. Um, it's a kind of a weird time to stream live. It's, it's early or not early, it's earlier in the day than I, I did normally, but I was planning to go live tonight too, to continue my project with um, the Van Hamert system 2.0. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I will put a link in the description. It's, it's not there right now, I'll put a link to that first uh, stream. But in the meantime, I want to make a shorter stream about a technique exercise I have developed and used the, the last few months to uh, warm up and to build my technique. And I think it's a very efficient, very effective exercise. And today I took the time to write it down. Of course, when you write it down, you see some things that could be better. So I improved it. And now I have a brand new version of this technique exercise. And I think you could only do this exercise and work on your technique that way. I mean, you could do all the other exercises I have on my channel as well, and I will link those videos too. There's lots of tips there too, but um, I'll try to touch on everything. And I see now that I turned my video light off. Maybe I should turn it on. That will improve the quality. Wait. Mm -hmm. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I think that's a bit better. So, this exercise has everything that you uh, want to practice. And I'll made, I made some tap. So, I'll show you the tap. And I have two views, right? I have this view with a large tap. And I also got suggestion to make a view with a smaller tap like this. So that when I play it, that you can see my face. Right, but let's start with the, the bigger tap. And um, I wrote down the exercise in, in D minor. It's eight bars. So you see four bars now. The eight bars doesn't fit in the screen. And let me just first play, play it for you. This, uh, I'll, I'll play the complete eight bars and then I'll walk you through what you should pay attention to, why some notes are colored, and then um, I'll show you how I practice this or how I use this. So the complete exercise sound like this, I'll play with a metronome. Maybe, yeah, that's a good tempo to start for now. One, two. So first thing is you should start this exercise on beat four. So the eighth bar beat, uh, let me show you to show you what I mean. Go to a different view so I can see what I'm. Yeah. So if you look at the bar five to eight, so you start, you should start with the three last notes of bar eight. So the, the triplet starting on A, right? And then you go to the beginning of the exercise because the exercise loops around. So I will show you the first four bars, but I will start with the on beat four. Here we go. One, two, three. And then it loops, it loops back. Okay, so let me go through every part of this exercise. So you'll see some colored notes. So the red color means that there is a double down, right? A double down stroke, which is a problem for many people. The blue color means that there's a sweep, which is not uh, that hard. That's why it's blue, right? Maybe should have made it green, but, um, but it is important to pay attention to the sweeps because one of the challenges of uh, picking technique, and I think that goes for, for most picking techniques, doesn't matter if it's alternate or economy, but especially for gypsy jazz is that you have to change patterns very fast from double downs to uh, to alternating to sweeping um, to, I don't know, what else is there? I think that's it. So uh, being very aware of when your uh, pick has to do a sweeping motion is, is, is very important, especially when it's fast. And as you can see, it's all triplets. 
So the reds are double downs, uh, the blues are um, sweeps, and then if you look at the notes, there's green color. That means that uh, it's intended to have your keep your fingers down, right? So let's just start there. Let's start bar three. There's this famous uh, gypsy jazz lick, which sounds like. So let's start with the right hand. The right hand, you see those the, the three green notes, G, B flat, D. Those uh, notes, those fingers should be kept down while you're playing them. So the moment I put them down, I leave them down. I only let go when I play the next high note. This, this gets you used to play like that. When you have, whenever you have an arpeggio shape going up, usually, then you should keep your fingers down because it helps your timing because the note will keep ringing and um, it helps the synchronicity between both of your hands. Like that. It also keeps your hand uh, relaxed and um, calm, right? Because otherwise you get this... It's very busy and it, that doesn't help your timing and the position and also the sound. Um, now there's also accents on the high notes, right? There's this little um, greater than sign. That's if you're not used to uh, seeing that, that means accents. So you should uh, make a right hand accent. Um, yeah, so then let's go to the, the right hand. Let's look at the, the, the red notes. So the red notes means there's a double down. And there's two kinds in this in these two bars. There's a, a kind that you have to actually down and then down on this on a on a lower string, and there's a kind where you are on the same string, right? In principle, the movements are the same. The trick is that on the first of those downstrokes, you make what I call a half rest stroke, and I've heard other people use it too. So I guess that's now the that's what's called now half rest stroke which is where you make the same kind of motion. Go. You make the same motion, so that means that your pick is still slanted downwards. If, if, you, know, if you want more uh, details on the rest stroke, I don't want to go into that in this video, I will link another video in the description where I go to, uh, into great detail on how a rest stroke is made. This is just an overview of the exercise. So you make the same motion, but you don't touch the the highest string, the next string. Right? In a normal rest stroke, you would rest on the next string, but in this case, you don't. You, you move the pick up immediately. Again, watch the, the video I will link in the description about uh, detailed instructions on the rest stroke and half rest stroke. And there's the kind where it's on the same string, and it's the same thing. Although there is no next string, you still want to make a stroke where you move the pick up directly. Okay, that's the third and fourth bar. So let's go to the first two bars. There's this. There, there again, two red notes means two downstrokes. So again, the fret two on the G string or the A is a half rest stroke followed by a normal rest stroke, which is fret five on the D string. Also, um, I, I don't want to go into it, but the fingering is important. That's why I wrote fingers or f fingerings above every note. So please check those fingerings. Of course, you can change them later, but I would start out like that. Now, the blue notes means sweep. It's very important to be very aware of the sweeps. That helps your time. It helps the sound. It helps to keep your hands relax because you're very aware of what you're doing. Uh, one thing I've discovered about uh, picking hand is that you should at all times be very aware of what you're doing, all, even to the, to the point where you are very aware that you are holding a pick. Uh, that this shouldn't be something that you have no control over. Of course, you can, for, for, can forget about it at one point because it's automatic, but at any time you should be able to feel the pick in your hand and know what the 
emotions are. Um, that's how you get precision and that's how you get um, good sound and good time. That's all connected. Okay, so... Um, have full sweep. There's two down strokes in a row, but there's a, it's a quarter note, so it's not difficult. Right? Green notes, leave your fingers down. Okay, let's go to the second four bars. Here we go. We get this pattern. Oh. To the G, sorry. Could look at my hands instead of the tap. Like that. Um, there's a couple of things that are difficult. The most difficult thing about it is that you have to uh, switch uh, positions with your left hand in the middle of the triplet. So it has to be fast. It's not in the middle of the triplet, but it's it's fast. But also, the first position change is a, is a ha is one fret, then it's two frets. One fret. So this it's kind of irregular, even though the pattern is very regular, it sounds regular. And then the other thing is that you have to make sweeps on the blue notes. Uh, that's not difficult, but you have to be very aware of it. Sweep, sweep, sweep. Then we get to the bar seven and eight. It's just a G minor, um, G minor arpeggio, but there is sweeps again. And there's green notes again in the left hand, which means you have to keep the fingers down, right? This is one shape, that's one shape. So you, your hand should, uh, should move like that with the fingers kept down. Double down, and a couple of double downs in a row. So a couple of half rest strokes, except for the last one is a full rest stroke. I'll play from the beginning. Yeah, like that. Okay, let me see. Did I forget something? There's some one more thing I could say about the first four bars. Then I'm gonna go into how you practice this. Uh, one thing about the first four bars is there's something which I call a closed and open position of the left hand. So closed position is when there's one finger per fret, right, like this. Open position is when there's a gap between your first and second finger, and you basically play with three fingers, like this. So many people ask me, why should I just not play everything in closed position if the reach is the same? That's because some things are easier to play with three fingers, and one of those things is diminished. If you have to play a fast diminished arpeggio, it's just much faster or much easier to do it like that than if you would do it with a fourth finger. This motion is slower than this motion. You can just move your, first, your the third finger faster. So that's why diminished arpeggios are always in open position, right? In, in where there's a gap between your first and second finger. So in the first two bars, you change from closed, because that's not diminished, not the diminished arpeggio, to open, and you back to closed. So you have to be very aware of, of where that happens. It happens on the D or on the F sharp. We go to open position, then we stay. It's not, it, you don't have, don't jump, like, no, play open position. So closed, open, closed. Oh, that's actually a stretch, that's a stretching. Your hand is still closed, you're stretching the pinky. It's all closed. That's just a stretch, right? So there's there's one uh, bar, on, yeah, one bar with open position, which is, is is two the bar two. Okay, so now how do you practice this? So now I'll go to my view with the, the small tap like this. 
Um, you practice this with a metronome. And I've shown this before, but I'm going to show it again. So you pick a tempo. For now, I'm picking tempo 120. But of course, uh, you can start with a slower tempo. And the first thing you do is you put the, the metronome on every click. So all four clicks, like this. You know what? I'm going to take a slower tempo so you can follow it better. Now, before you do this with a metronome, or you have to go through all the technical difficulties that you have. Be very aware of the, of the red notes, the, the, the blue notes, the, the green notes. Practice it in isolation. But I'm going to assume that you've already done that, right? So now you're ready to play, to play the whole exercise. Um, by now, you should know the... By the time you're going to do that, you should know the exercise by heart, right? Because you've practiced everything in isolation. And again, you can do the exact same with the metronome that I'm going to show you with, with small parts of the lick. But you have done all of that, so you can play it by heart because that's important. You don't want to be looking at the tap. Now you're going to put the metronome on all four beats. This is tempo 100. And you're just going to play it. So it starts on beat four, right? Here you go. One, two, three. Oh yeah, first sing it. So you got the, the timing right. So you have to be able to sing triplets and you have to be able to sing eighth notes. Yeah? One, two, three. Eighth notes. Okay, that feels good. Let's play. One, two, Like that. Okay, so that's the first exercise, all beats. Right? You can spend some time with that. Second exercise is you turn off beat two and four with my metronome app, which is called Pro Metronome. I'll put a link in the description. You can turn beats off, but there's many metronomes which you can do that. You can also just take a normal metronome and put it on half tempo. And now for me, this is one and three, right? Three, four, one, two, three. And so forth. Right. Um, do I, let me check one thing. Yeah, sorry. I was. I should have played continuous triplets on this. Uh, on the on the last fourth beat, because there's this difficult position change where you have where you have to play a higher note, but your hand moves down. Okay. So next exercise would be to put the metronome on two and four. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So all the time I'm trying to be very conscious about all the things we talked about, right? The half rest strokes, uh, the close to open position, keeping my fingers down on some uh, some parts, the sweeps, all of that together. Of course, it's very difficult to to be aware of everything. So maybe you could focus first time you focus on the the sweeps and the half rest strokes. Maybe the second time you focus on 
of keeping your fingers down on those green notes and then you focus on the close to open position. At one point, you will be able to focus on everything. Okay, um, next exercise would be to be only beat two. And this is the order, right? So all four clicks, then beat one and three, two and four, because you'll get this tempo in your head and it will be easier to do just uh, beat two. Three, four, one, two, three. And don't look at the metronome, right? I'm, lo I'm looking at the metronome to get the initial count, but then I'm just listening. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Great, okay, now let's do beat four. That's the last exercise. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, down, two, three, da 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 You will find that beat four is the most difficult one. I'm, I also wasn't completely in sync. And also in slow tempos, it's even more difficult. So you uh, keep um, working on that and then you get the tempo faster and faster. So the, um, the final tempo probably, if you can make it to 150, but maybe even 170. So let me just try it, this complete exercise at 150. Let me see if I can do that on a live stream. So all four beats. One, two, three. Take da da One, two, three. Not bad, okay, let's do, let's skip one and three to save time. Let's do two and four immediately. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, only bit two. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Ta da 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 One, two, three. Let's do four. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Ba ba da 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 ba. Ah, one, two, three. Okay, just for fun, let's see if I can do it at 190. Let's start at 2 and 4. 
two, three, four, and take it, take it, take it, take it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. It's not completely clean, right? Okay, let's uh, <laughs> try beat four. I will fail, but I'm gonna try it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's okay. It needs to work. Um, so this is this is like the, you can work on this for months. But then the next level would be to actually start shifting the lick up. So you start because now we're playing everything in G minor. But the lowest uh, key you could play it in is actually uh, what would that be? G flat, yeah, G flat minor, and you would go up until you reach B minor. So. Um, yeah, so let me give a little demonstration. I'm gonna do it slower. Let's do one one seventy. I'll do two and four, and I'll start in uh, G flat minor, and I'll go up. One, two, three. Ah. So the, the jump is important. So you actually have to think it's D flat. We're going D flat seven. And I have to jump to the uh, flat nine, and I have to find the root here. Let's let's take a, sh a slower tempo so I have more time. One, two, three. And then you go to the second one, which we did. One, two, three. Right, that's the normal one. Then you go to uh, E flat seven. One, two, three. And then you go to F seven. Uh, E7. F7. You can go back down again. Well, so you see what happens is that I have to think so hard now to make the right jumps and stuff that my timing starts to suffer and my position starts to suffer. So this is just this is something you do once you can play the exercise in G minor, and then you can go up and you can go down again, right? You can go starting uh, on G flat minor all the way up to B minor, and then you can go down again. There's lots of stuff you can do with the exercise. You can uh, go up a whole step. And then go down a half step. But whatever you want to do, you could do it. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll try to stream again tonight uh, to go back to my um, Van Hammer System 2.0 for the next five phrases. But in the meantime, until then, starting now, you can do this exercise. And then, then tonight, if I make it, I'm not sure I'll make it, then you are completely warmed up. Uh, for my patrons, I will upload the tab for this exercise immediately after the stream, so it will be up uh, in 10 minutes. And if you're not a Patreon, you can you know, print screen it from the video, right? I'll make it bigger one more time. Uh, there it is. 
or you can join my oh, or you can join my uh, Patreon link in the description. There's the second for us. Until tonight, hopefully, or the next time. Bye.